All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the decoding toll-free verification webinar today. My name is Hannah Clendenin, and I manage our virtual events here at Bandwidth, and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. I have a few housekeeping items before we begin today. All of your lines are muted to prevent any background noise, um, so all questions will need to be entered into the Q&A box on your control panel. Don't hesitate to ask anything you want to know, but we will reserve questions for the end of our time um, of the session today. You will also receive a recording link of today's webinar via email in the next few days, so be on the lookout for that. As you're probably aware, we will be doing a giveaway for a solo stove gift card at the end of the presentation right before the Q&A, and we'll announce the winner then. The bandwidth team will reach out to the winner with details regarding the prize. We have two speakers with us on the webinar today. We're excited to have Stephanie Lashley and Emily Champion with us from Bandwidth. Um, Stephanie is the Director of Messaging Product Operations Management, um, and as an experienced leader, she is responsible for the operational, financial, and strategic management of Bandwidth's messaging products. Before joining Bandwidth, Stephanie managed value-added services, including voice and messaging products at Sprint. Um, during her 15-year career, she collaborated with CTIA to create messaging industry policy, as well as working with Kansas City startup companies to create the Sprint Accelerator. We also have with us Emily Champion, who's a product manager at Bandwidth. Emily has been at Bandwidth for about three and a half years, overseeing A2P messaging development and helping customers navigate toll-free and 10 DLC regulation changes. As a product manager, she is currently leading the development for short code and toll-free. Emily came to Bandwidth because of her love of working directly with customers to solve problems and the emphasis Bandwidth places on customer service. Now she is able to apply that passion and serve as a customer advocate during conversations with TCR and toll-free messaging aggregator. Obviously, our presenters have an incredible amount of experience. So if there is anything that I missed that either of you would like to add, please do so. Um, and I will go ahead and pass it off to Emily to get us started. Thanks, everyone. Sounds good. So I'm going to go through a little bit more about what exactly we are going to be talking about today. Um, really kind of, we are going to start out exploring what exactly toll-free verification is and who needs to go through that process, what uh, change is taking place, um, what will happen to traffic that is verified uh, or traffic that isn't verified on September 30th, and as well as the knowns and unknowns around that date. Um, and a little bit more around how bandwidth can assist with businesses that are applying for toll-free verification. So let's actually start off um, with a question for you, Stephanie, about what exactly is toll-free verification? Great question. So verification is an onboarding solution designed to ensure the highest level of messaging deliverability on toll-free messaging. At its core, verification is meant to identify the sender ensure compliance with toll-free messaging best practices, and help eliminate bad actors from sending unwanted messages over the A2P channel. We'll talk through many of the benefits of toll-free verification today, but at its core, toll-free verification reduces false positive spam blocks um, by preemptively sharing message details with our downstream partner, and it ultimately improves messaging predictability and deliverability. So Emily, why is toll-free verification important? So when you think through a lot of it, I know you worked very closely with the short code space in previous um, roles. Uh, and I know short code has been around for a 20 plus yeah, years at this point. Time. And it, it really kind of helps set that standard of helping to ensure that the space stays a compliant space and that who is sending messages and why they are sending it is known. Um, you can kind of see that that has been the case for sure with 10 DLC as it's been rolling out of it's kind of getting closer to that short code space of wanting to know who is sending messages and why. And toll-free verification is essentially that same overall feel when it comes to um, comes to the space. They are yeah. really trying to ensure that toll-free verification helps to know who is sending messages, why they are sending them. So that way the entire ecosystem as a messaging ecosystem as a whole really has more consistent compliant, uh, more consistent and compliant regulations across the board. So that way they're 
there truly can be additional growth and that value can continue to be realized in the messaging ecosystem. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that makes perfect sense. And I know one of the kind of when you go, um, yeah, when you kind of go into that that next sort of like what the impact could be when it comes into verification as a whole, um, you kind of really think of there's three different states that a message can, or not a message, that a phone number can be in as a whole. It's either a restricted state, a pending verification state, or a verified state. So when you're looking at that restricted state, it really is the kind of the, the most limited across the board. Um, it means that you have yet to submit a toll-free verification request, or you have submitted a request and it was denied previously. Um, typically, that means that there is going to be additional spam blocking. There's a much higher threshold for that, um, or I should say a much lower threshold for that, where there's going to be a lot more uh, oversight and a lot less trust when you're in that restricted state. After a application is submitted, it moves into, that phone number moves into that pending verification state. And when it's in that pending verification state, that means some of those, some, there's a little bit more trust there. Um, it, those spam filters move into more of like a medium level rather than the high level they're at and restricted. And that also means that you do have a less chance of false positive blocking, um, sort of helps to increase the trust across the board. You are trying to do the right thing by getting your message or getting your phone number into that verified state. Once a decision has been made, um, either for or against, you would actually move out of this pending verification state and towards verified or back to restricted um, if you got denied. But if you move into verified, the spam filtering becomes even less. It does still exist. It doesn't just go away, but it is a much more trusted path. Uh, you have proven out who you are as a company, why you are sending messages. Um, it helps to sort of ensure that that traffic is um, less subject to those false positive blocks. So verified definitely is the state that is ideal. Um, but I do know that one of the big questions has been what happens on September 30th. So kind of looking through that, um, I'll look to you, Stephanie, do you mind explaining what some of the differences is uh, what some of the differences are when it comes to September 30th. Yeah, so um, let's break down toll-free verification into two different um, two different states or two different types. So messages going to the U.S. versus messages going to Canada. So um, you mentioned the three states of verification. These states of verification apply to both U.S. and Canadian traffic, but there's an important nuance to Canadian messaging that's really important to call out. You'll notice the term restricted, and you may be wondering what that term actually means. Um, it means different things in the U.S. than it does in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, as you just mentioned, restricted means that you can send unverified traffic in the U.S., but with daily, weekly, and monthly sending limits. There's a daily limit of 2,000 messages, which equates to roughly a weekly limit of 12,000 messages and 25,000 messages a month. Mm -hmm. And again, these limits apply to U.S. traffic only. Um, if we go to the next slide, this is where we talk about Canadian messaging. Yeah, perfect. So. Um, on Canadian messaging, <laughs> the, the, the biggest call out here is again in that restricted state. So in Canada, if a number is not verified, that means that there will be a complete block and that message will not make it through. So I think that's an important nuance to call yeah. out, the biggest difference between US and Canadian messaging. Um, and then I think that's a very good call it as a whole. It's just that it, it does change that aspect a little bit more. Um, I know one of the key things a lot of people do ask is how can I ensure that I get that sort of highest level, level of messaging deliverability? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think it's important to keep in mind the requirements for compliant toll-free traffic. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to your earlier point about toll-free messaging 
being in line with 10 DLC and short code. All of the requirements are the same across all messaging products. So I think it's a helpful reminder um, to look at those four cornerstones of successful message deliverability. So I think we have all heard this a million times, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, identification of the sender or the business. So when you're filling out that verification form, you need to include the business name, your corporate website, your business address, and the compliance contact at your company. The second piece of information that's really important is you have to include a sample message. So always include information about your, your, your use case and also a sample message. The third one, I think, is getting more and more scrutiny from the carriers. This is one-to-one -one consent. So that clear opt-in is going to be more and more important. And the last piece is compliant opt-out language. We're going to move slides. So I know I think that's definitely incredibly helpful. It's one of the key things um, when you kind of look at the slide here, you can really see just a little bit more information about what is that requirement across the board. Um, I know you you really highlighted out a lot of the, the key things I think we have been asked about in the past. Um, and when I kind of think through it, I know a lot of the a lot of the questions I feel like I tend to get um, after we sort of highlight out how you can get hired messaging deliverability by going through verification tends to be how do I get approved um, for verification? Like what, what is likely to be a cause for me to be denied potentially? Sure. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what we go through next after this, right? Yeah, I think that's a great call out. Um, so really the main reasons for denial are gonna be back to those four cornerstones of messaging. So failure to adhere to consent policies, I would say the majority of denials that we see are due to a lack of proper, proper opt-in. Um, I've mentioned, just mentioned the, the importance of, of opt-in and the, the additional scrutiny that we're getting from the carriers. So opt-in is really important. Mm -hmm. The second piece is, is kind of a, I don't know if I even need to say this, but it's really about disallowed content. This is usually caught during Bandwidth's initial review of the campaign. Um, if you do have questions about what is disallowed content, our, our campaign's team is more than happy to walk yeah. you through that. The second um, reason for denial that we're seeing is the inability to verify a business. So many times when that verification submission comes through, there's missing or incomplete information, which causes our teams to have to go back and get it from the customers. Um, and then the last piece really speaks to that opt-out language. So think about appropriate opt-out language or stop language being end, stop, mm -hmm. unsubscribe, quit. Um, so tell me, Emily, how can bandwidth help our customers navigate this, you know, this experience? <laughs> So I know we, we at Bandwidth, as you mentioned, we do have that campaign team. Um, I know we kind of highlight it uh, on the, the next slide. It's just the that we have a couple of different options. Um, we have that campaign team that has done a great job over the past year and a half of really ensuring that we have that solid, um, more manual process where you can either submit a one-off form via us to get like just a single number verified or get like a single a like handful of numbers verified as those requests do roll in. Um, but then we also have this option called a, the bulk verification form. And the bulk verification form is really designed much more for a company that has a larger quantity of toll-free numbers. Um, a contact center could be a great example of that. Um, and or a company that has multiple locations, another example. Um, but then you could also have just multiple companies on that bulk verification form, if they all come in at the exact same time, like you're trying to get one big push to get your traffic into that state, the bulk verification form is an excellent example. Um, the campaign team does do a quick review of these as they do come in, which the nice thing with that, they, as you mentioned, they do tend to catch things that might need additional insight or might need additional clarification before it even gets that to the downstream partner to actually ensure that 
your initial registration or um, verification request is more likely to be approved. So that way it kind of reduces that back and forth and reduces your overall wait time because we want to ensure that you can get to that verified state as quickly as possible. So we do have another option that is coming soon, um, which is that toll-free verification API. It's really designed for our customers to sort of programmatically send to us all of the information that is needed for that sort of one-off form. So it's really designed to help sort of if you are requesting all this information on a form on your website or your customer's website, then you can pull all that in and just send it directly to us. Um, and then we will send it on as well. So the positive about that is it does sort of help speed up that submission process and helps reduce the potential manual input that you do need to do. Um, so it is something that is coming up. I do encourage you, if you have any interest in it, feel free to reach out to your bandwidth account manager or your bandwidth um, customer account manager, and they will be able to sort of help facilitate putting you in contact with me and we can kind of go forward with that. Um, so no, one more thing, like I should say one last thing before we get really into any sort of questions is I do want to highlight out just how much of our traffic we have been able to get verified instead yeah. of where we are now. And we're actually overall in a pretty good state. Um, almost 90% of our traffic is registered today, um, which I feel like is very good to highlight out of. We have done a lot of initial work before even having this API available to get traffic into a good state. Um, we have seen that average number of, um, or that should say that request is taking about two to three weeks on average to move from pending to verified. Um, and we are observing lower rates of blocking when it comes to traffic that is verified. So there is That's a very great. good benefit in yeah. getting verified. Um, and I think after that, really, it's just, um, unless you have anything else to add, Stephanie, is... I really don't. If Hannah wants to help facilitate asking questions, I think we're ready for some questions overall. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you both. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go ahead and announce our prize winner for the Solo Stove gift card before we jump into our questions. Um, so congratulations to Dustin from Skywriter. Our winner will be reaching out individually with the prize um, and uh, you'll get more details about that after the webinar. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and move into a time of questions. Um, so for both of you, do these restrictions fall on a per um, TN basis? Yeah, I'll you want to take that? Sure. Um, the, the restrictions for the U.S. sending after September 30th do fall on a per TN basis. So um, that is something to essentially, I guess, kind of keep in mind as you are evaluating how it does affect you. It is at a per TN basis. Awesome. Um, do we verify individual phone numbers? We do verify individual phone numbers. That's sort of how that verification happens is on a per TN level. Yeah. It's it's different in 10 DLC in that, that sense where yeah. you get a sort of bulk, not bulk, um, you get that campaign ID and then you assign it to multiple TNs. Right. Verification is done on a per TN level. You can make, add multiple TNs to that verification request, but it is still done at a per TN level. Sounds good. Where is that verification data being sent? Is this being processed through um, the campaign registry or is it just sent um, through to a different place? I can take that. Mm -hmm. Sure. So toll-free verification is actually handled by a specific toll-free provider, a specific um, ICV that handles toll-free messaging for the industry. So that's where those submissions are going. They are not going through TCR at this point point in time, toll-free toll -free numbers are not registered through TCR. They are done separately through this verification mechanism. Great. That's helpful. I think it was definitely the main point of that question was like keeping data confidential. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, another question, why is Canada so much stricter? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, it really comes down to the requirements by the Canadian carriers. So as we know, currently, the messaging product is not a regulated space. And so it's up to each carrier to make policy and regulation 
for their own networks. And so what we're seeing is the Canadian carriers are really kind of making um, decisions that are requiring a lot more information for messaging to transverse their network. Fantastic. Um, someone asked, can you also provide an example of acceptable opt-out language? Yeah, language absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I touched on this on my, one of my slides, but um, end, quit, unsubscribe, stop. stop um, those are all adequate yeah. stop messages and I know keywords. one of the key things um, with the Canadian carriers, they do require, I think it's a, a ret. I was, ret. I did not take French. I apologize if I butchered that, um, but it you is, it okay, I'll perfectly. take it um, be, because again, it is a Canadian um, carrier. So they do require uh, French as well. So um, one thing I know, I think somebody brought up relatively recently to me and pointed out is a great example is like, when you put something like you combine uh, words, so you say like stop to end, yeah, that's a good all in one out. word. It that tends to cause some additional problems. So separating those out into individual words is acceptable. It's when you try to push it all together that yeah. it, it's not quite as um, it doesn't work the same way. Yeah, it's important to put spaces around those keywords. Mm -hmm. um, I had a specific situation that. Um, I think a customer was trying to use stop to end without any spaces and that was causing some issue. Mm -hmm. um, the, the direction from our carrier partner was to just separate it out so that stop is very designated as the keyword. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, is there some sort of campaign ID or ID passed in the metadata similar to what we see in 10 DLC ecosystem? Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. happy to answer that one. Um, the answer on that is there is a, that's no, um, it doesn't work quite the same way. Um, since at, at the moment, there is really only that one vendor, they are kind of acting um, in that database category in and of themselves where they have that toll-free verification status of that phone number held there. Um, one thing bandwidth is planning on doing with our API and it also will apply up to our dashboard as well because of this API. Um, we will be able to display the verification status um, both in reports that you can download as well as on the individual telephone numbers. Um, so you will have that there, but there isn't really a campaign ID or anything that you get from the industry at large that you can then apply um, to multiple, uh, I guess, toll-free numbers in the same way. So there is that verified and pending state, um, but there isn't really anything beyond that, I will say. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, for any restricted messaging in the U.S., can you send traffic that includes a URL? I'm trying to think through that one because when I think... For the U.S., yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, URLs... Um, there is there are certain guidelines mm -hmm. for URLs. I think we mentioned that on our support site specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so it would probably be helpful to to look at information there. But the short answer is yes. Yeah, I would say the the key thing when I when I was trying to think through it is much more if they like the public URL shorteners right. are still going to have issues, um, but private shorteners and full links for the U.S. you shouldn't have. Um, additional restrictions, but right. it's something to keep in mind. I think we have highlighted out on our support site exactly what some of those public shorteners are that should be avoided across the board. And that's for any messaging channel, not just right. for toll-free. Yeah, that's a great call out. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so in the past months, toll-free verification and the downstream provider would often require legal language to be found somewhere on the brand's website about messaging. Is that still feedback we'll receive after the toll-free verification form is submitted? Yes, you'll have to provide a link to your company's terms and conditions and your privacy policy. So it's the same as it is on other messaging products. And I think it's our it's the same as the guidance we've given up to this point as well. Perfect. Does toll-free verification apply at the campaign or TFEN level? Um, it applies at the individual number level, um, okay. for sure. I know it's just the the nuance um, as 
I know there's been a lot of changes in the messaging industry as a whole in the past year or so, um, especially with 10 DLC rolling out right now, they are definitely operating in a much more separate um, state. And so think of it as toll free is much more at that TN level. You can certainly submit multiple toll free numbers tied up to the same company and in the same submission. Um, but it is still handled at each individual toll free number level versus mm-hmm. you'll see is much more at that kind of bulk level of like the sending. You can apply multiple TNs. Um, once you have submitted, you essentially get that identifier. They, they do operate. Um, a little bit differently in that sense. Got it. Thank you. Um, Where can they find the bulk verification form? That is also on our support site. Um, I think one of the key things that the campaign team or the messaging fraud team specifically has done an excellent job of is ensuring that we have that bulk um, or that toll-free verification handbook. And Mm -hmm. I am almost 99% positive that the bulk link is in there. Um, If it isn't, I do promise it is on our website. It is um, one of the things we do try to have out there. And if you have any issues finding it, um, somebody from our support staff will be happy to help you um, facilitate finding that link. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I think you actually mentioned this earlier, but how long can um, one expect the toll-free verification process to take? So we're seeing um, we're seeing around a one to two week okay. SLA internally at bandwidth. Um, at that point, once it's submitted downstream, um, it goes into that pending state. Mm-hmm. And as Emily mentioned, there aren't a lot of restrictions restrictions on that throughput level and that and that pending state. Once it reaches our downstream partner, they take another, um, I would say right now they're looking at about three week to four week Mm -hmm. SLA to get those processed. Um, So total from start to finish, it's about a five to six week process. Okay. And I know one thing to highlight out that that, um, the API is sort of helping lift up is that initial processing time on the family side. it does mean, however, since we are not sort of looking at it and catching things early on, there could be a chance that um, the request does get denied or additional feedback is needed. And so it does live in that pending state for longer. Um, I do just like to make out make that caveat there of like what the API can potentially help speed up if anybody is interested in the API in the long run. Oh, that's helpful. Um, this is on, I know we talked about the opt-out language for the opt-in. Are carriers still requiring evidence that the keyword is posted somewhere? Um, they've been asked to provide photos of that signage in the past. Is that still the case? Yeah, that direction hasn't changed. They're still looking for proof of opt-in and that it includes a screenshot of where that opt-in lives. Perfect. How will someone know if their request for verification is denied? That's a good question. It's a great question. Um, so today, if you are going through that manual process, it is um, entirely ticket-based. So you would find out via the ticket that you initially opened um, that the request had been denied, as well as a little bit more information about why it was denied. Um, with the API initially, we are not um, being given a reason for the denial. We would pass along that it had been denied but right now we aren't getting that reason that it was denied. So you would have to open up a ticket to help investigate the why. Um, That is something that we are expecting to be rolled out in the future though, is that we will be able to pass along additional information about why request is denied. It's just not something that we have a set timeline on yet. So I do want to call that out um, as a potential limitation with the API today. That's good to know. Yeah. The ticket uh, should give you additional information for the manual process of the form and the bulk verification form as well of why things were denied. Perfect. Um, Why is it important for messages to be under 250 characters? Okay, I'm, I will say like this one, I'm not actually sure exactly where that one's coming from because um, I know there is an overall um, sort of messaging industry um, limitation of just how many messages can be on each uh, segment. 
per se. That's why the concept of message segments do exist, of how many characters can be on each segment. Um, I don't know of anything specific for 250 characters. Um, okay. I only know that 160 kind of segment limitation. Mm-hmm. So that one might require a little bit more follow-up information just to figure out if there is an issue that somebody's experiencing um, with anything over 250 characters. Um, okay. So definitely follow-up information is probably okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do pending verifications adhere to the same limits as restricted? No, um, it does not. Once it is in that pending state, you don't have the same uh, throughput limitations. You do still have some additional heightened spam filtering compared to that um, verified, verified state, state, but you don't have the same throughput limitations. Got it. Um, someone asked for clarification on um, what was meant by, I think it, it says TM, but I'm wondering if this meant TN um, and just clarifying what that term is. I think it's TN. So I think that we're using TN as telephone number synonymously okay. with toll free number yeah. TFN. So um, that's probably the I was trying to look there. Uh, yeah, we're them. trying to see the question. Okay. But yeah, but okay. hopefully that helps. If it doesn't ask a different question, yeah. happy okay. to happy to to answer whatever the question is. That's perfect. I just want to make sure we we're using the same the language mm-hmm. was understood and everything. That's perfect. Yeah. We should be um, saying TFN. Okay, it's probably you know slipping and saying yeah, we're TN. using the same yeah. thing interchangeably. <laughs> so that's probably something. It's a good call out. Yeah, no problem. Um, does bandwidth have an API for TF verification? Yep, um, that's something we we don't have it readily available today. We are in, I'd say, more of the prototype beta testing phase. So we are in the process of onboarding customers. Um, if you are interested in gain, being in that more early access state, um, mm-hmm. so please contact your bandwidth representative and we can sort of evaluate if it is a good fit for you, if it will solve your needs. And then we can start talking through it. Um, but it is something we are certainly planning and have certainly been working on the past several, like month, two months or so, I would say, maybe a little bit longer than that. Okay, that's great. Um, another question since Canada does have um, that restriction and approvals around, they're saying like two to three weeks is, I think, what they've experienced. How is, or is there a way to onboard new clients quickly? Um, they have a free trial model. Does that mean they won't be able to send until it is approved? With Canada in particular, um, outside of when the API is available, being able to send um, that request via the API pretty quickly, I don't know. Um, I don't know if there would be anything that would really speed up the sending in particular for Canada. For Canada specifically, I don't know. So okay. we well, can- I was going to say, um, because I, when I'm thinking back through that question, mm-hmm. it was the question around, they wouldn't be able to send until it was approved or. Yeah. Okay. Is there any way to speed up on for Canadian traffic while they're going through the verification process? I don't think there is, mm-hmm. but we can always take it back and see if we find something new. Yeah. And it really, the key thing I could think of there is, it's all about getting it into that pending state for Canada, yeah. especially of after the sub- if you can submit the information um, as soon as you get it for more of that free trial model, then you can go ahead and um, once it has left and is in that pending state, right, you can start sending. So it does it's not the full wait process to get approved. It's just getting into that pending state. Yeah, so as soon as the request, is in the pending state, they should be able to start their mm-hmm. onboarding process. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Um, and I think someone asked, if this may have been covered earlier, but what happens at that September 30th deadline to any unregistered numbers? Okay. Um, that would be... Oh, sorry, I can go ahead and take this one. Um, so at that September 30th deadline, um, nothing will happen on September 30th itself. It's just... October 1st then. Um, So on October 1st, any number that is not 
verified or has not had a pending state for their that particular phone number would start experiencing those daily throughput limitations or so weekly throughput limitations as well as the monthly ones. So that's sort of where um, on October 1st, you would start having those sort of throttling um, as well as the higher spam filters for the US and then for Canada, it would be a block if it isn't in that pending state. Got it. Um, another question, um, can multiple businesses send from the same toll-free number? Um, they're saying basically, can they share that toll-free number? If they can, how do they get that verified? I would say that verification yeah. is really cracking down on multiple businesses using the same toll-free number. I think that's one of the reasons why verification was implemented. Um, so I think that I would advise customers not to share toll-free yeah. numbers across companies. It, it kind of harkens back to that idea of um, shared short code right. that we, we've we seen shared short codes being definitely rolled off in the industry. They're being and, shut down by yeah. the carriers. And so I think that that falls, this question falls into that same category mm -hmm. and um, would probably not, would not uh, deliver the highest throughput yeah. of, of messages. It, it probably wouldn't be the best customer experience overall. No, that makes sense. One other nuance onto that question, um, they mentioned that they're an agency that manage multiple businesses that only have about 100 messages a month. Um, any advice or thoughts for not sharing, but still um, making it effective when it's a smaller business that they might be working with? I would still say individual toll-free numbers would be the best overall. Um, it's one of those cases where... Oh, um, it's one of those cases where something like toll-free, especially since it isn't currently anything that is charged for, um, so it does help limit the overall um, overhead for having multiple toll-free numbers and needing to register or have multiple submissions for verification. Um, the toll-free numbers as a whole can definitely, it does, would increase the cost a bit to have multiple, but it is much more likely to have a better overall experience um, in being able to send in a compliant manner. That makes sense. Um, another uh, question more on the um, transfer of verification. So if they do a verification transfer with the number, or excuse me, does the verification transfer with the number? Um, if they have a number verified with another provider and another um, in an ID and transfer service to bandwidth, does that move along with it or does that need to be resubmitted? It does transfer. You like it does transfer. We do have to go through an additional resubmission process, but okay. it isn't as thorough, I believe. Um, this might need a little bit more clarification for campaigns. Seems to know they've done a lot more with it. I know it does transfer over, um, but I don't know the exact timeline on how long that sort of, we do have to do some reach out to let them, let the industry vendor know that we now have that phone number in it. We now have that verification. It's still being used for the same client um, mm -hmm. kind of situation. So that's where I'm not 100% sure on that timeline on how long it takes. Right. Um, but it's not the same as a full new verification request. I do know that. Okay. Yeah, I would advise for something specific like this to reach out to um, the, your account manager or the campaigns team at here, here at Bandwidth um, because I think that they can probably help navigate these nuanced situations. Absolutely. Um, also, how is verification um, of consent or opt-in handled when the type of messages are transactional or otherwise aren't required by law to be supported by consent? I think there still has to be some sort of consent in terms of like, as like a consumer, and this is me speaking as a consumer um, of services as a whole, rather than me speaking as somebody who works in the messaging industry. Um, even if it is very transactional, like say my my bank is contacting me to tell me my account balance is this or that somebody accessed my account, it, that's a very transactional approach. Um, I still would want to have signed up at some point. And I think that's sort of where they the carriers and are really trying to push on having that consent is 
there needs to be some sort of action that's taken in order to sign up. Either it's a verbal consent of as I'm a great mm-hmm. example is as I'm checking into a hotel or as I'm talking with somebody on a support line, I mm-hmm. verbally agree that I am okay with having follow-up via message. Um, mm-hmm. That is still a, a consent um, of some sort, but it, it is one of those things where like you, you can't just, I feel like you have to have some sort of consent. Yeah. I would say re- consent is required regardless of use case. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Is there a reason why the TFN verification goes, it seems kind of a bit above and beyond what's currently required for 10 DLC? I think specifically you mentioned screenshots or photos. Yeah, I think you can kind of see that the, um, the industry is sort of trying to coalesce around a set of regulations. Um, I can't speak to exactly why it's screenshots versus just a description. Um, Cause I know TCR and 10 DLC is moving much more towards having some additional opt-in and opt-out information um, being needed in the future as well, but they don't require the screenshot per se. Um, that could just be a nuance of the industry vendor right now. I think it it is realistically. It's just a nuance of what their preference is um, and what they have chatted through and negotiated with the carriers um, as a best practice for right now. Mm-hmm. So you can sort of see that the industry is getting a little bit more um, standardized across all of all three of the big messaging channels in having some opt-in information and opt-out information with TCR's new move, but it isn't something that I think um, it's, I think the difference between having a screenshot versus a description is probably just a matter of nuance between what was negotiated is my instinct. Okay. That's helpful. Perfect. Um, We have time for one more question. Um, Besides the volume limits that are starting on September 30th, in general, we see an increase, increased filtering of toll-free numbers. I think that's a definite possibility. I think that starting October 1st, if you are running unverified traffic or if you're running traffic over an unverified toll-free number, that you can expect that there would be some additional filtering. That's great. Well, everyone, thank you so much for all of your questions. If we did not get to one of your questions, um, our team has these and would like to follow up with you. Um, Again, if you have more, would like to chat with us 101, um, you're welcome to schedule a meeting, like was mentioned, with your rep here at Bandwidth or email us at webinars at bandwidth.com. And as a reminder, we will be sending... um, the recording of today's webinar within the next few business days. So be on the lookout for that. Um, And again, I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. I want to thank our speakers, um, Emily and Stephanie, for being with us as well. Um, We hope this was informative. Again, this is the beginning of the conversation. So if you have any other questions, we would love to hear from you. Um, And I want to thank you again and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.